Welcome to the Cannon Fodder Diecast, episode 16. This is an array of hats and other bad puns. Um, just as a heads up, going into the episode, we were trying out a new audio setup. It didn't work out quite the way we wanted, so you're going to have to bear with us as we tinker and improve. But it's a cool episode, it's a lot of fun, a lot of laughter, and thank you for listening. And we are, oh, hold on. Okay, we're recording. So we're going to start this episode with a second state of the game, since it's episode 16. And um, what the state of the game is for the diecast is just we talk briefly about where our heads are at with the campaign, our characters, any issues or mistakes that we've noticed that we're going to rectify going forward. Um, anything that you've learned about your characters. So... Lynn's, you said that you learned something new about your character. Do you want to go first? I'm um, sure. So just as full clarity here, um, I have been switching back and forth between using my phone and the computer. And in that mess, I did not realize that I had actually obtained aura of protection, which allows me to, um, and to allows anyone within 10 feet of me to get a bonus to their saving throw. So hug you all the looks time. Like it's a starting at sixth level. Whenever you are a friendly creature within ten feet of you, must make a saving throw. The creature gains a bonus to the saving throw equal to your charisma modifier. So so shoot crossbow quarrels from between her which legs. Is great because so hug her all the time. Pretty Just much. constantly touch Corey. My charisma is plus four, so it'd be plus four to any of your guys' saving throws. I think wow. Leahy's gonna start riding on your shoulders. No, I thought Corey we said that wasn't allowed. <laughs> what? I thought the dwarf wasn't allowed to ride with anyone. No, Corey is mine. No, no I'm touching. No Corey. one's allowed to throw oh, the dwarf. Got it, got it. So that was something that I learned from reading a little bit more into my character um, as I learned more about the paladin. All right, anybody else? We have learned that I really don't like spiders. That's true, but you're in therapy for it now with your helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Valium. <laughs> it's just this constant pump of Valium. Does that give her any armor class bonuses or just? No. No, we don't do piecemeal armor. No. I tried. Sorry. It just it makes me happy. Um I don't like the section that we're in in the campaign book. I think that Wizards of the Coast wasted players' times. And uh but because there's some integral story events we couldn't skip it, but I think that the narrative that I'm working with as a DM from episodes like thirteen through to sixteen it's just really weak, so I apologize if it's not super engaging. I'm doing my best to homebrew it to make it better. Um, I like the dragon hatchery a lot better. I feel like there was more going on there. It was particularly weird. You were strapped to a tree. Cesaria was off like being sneaky and spying and stuff. And, and then we I, get to the road. And I, I, I still don't forgive you for not carrying that out. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it was as big as I am. I don't care. That's why... Corey's my friend now. Corey that, could have carried a dragon egg. Corey could brain. have carried an egg for me. That and I can give you bonuses to your saving throws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I keep you alive. So could she do? <laughs> Those new dice you got are pretty awful unlucky. <laughs> See, uh, whether far, far less unlikely, unlucky than my other set. I think it's the uh, roller and not the dice. Yeah, it's user error, right? Just saying. What about you? Anything that you have comments on in the last couple sessions? Um, We keep forgetting to use our warp tokens. We do, yeah. Although it would be helpful if we had some sort of high-stakes narrative going on instead of a boring here or there plot. That's true. Or as we've discussed in Cannon Fodder before, an and-then plot. An and then, and then, and then, and then. You're right. It, it's really aggravating. I don't, I don't even remember what book we read that was... It was like half of them. That's, yeah, that's true. It was definitely the Andromeda plot. Oh, God. Don't remind me of that. I still have nightmares about that game. Ugh. Then the thought crossed my mind the other day. Maybe I should go back and play that. Mm. And I wondered why. Were you intoxicated? I may have been tired. It's close enough. You wanted something to put you to sleep that wasn't a two-by-four? I got a question for Leaky. Speaking of video games, <laughs> when, is your gonna, when is your beard going to be as fantastic as that beard of the dwarf in The Witcher? Never. I don't know. Because I'm going to burn it off. So hostile today. <laughs> My God. <laughs> I don't know if it'll ever be that glorious. 
I was looking at that and I was like, that's going to be old King Leaky wearing a beard like that. Maybe. He Maybe. won't ever be old King Leaky because he won't have a dragon to ride because he didn't save my eggs. I've ridden one dragon that's glory enough for me. Yeah, but it almost murdered you. Eh. Anything else in terms of state of the game? No. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to getting to the next chapter. Ready, set, roll for initiative. Bob. I've done that before. Um, okay, so you guys are. We're gonna skip forward a couple days. Uh, we left off on day twenty-nine of our many-week adventure north, um, with the goal of trying to figure out where the dragon cult is going. And you're in a particularly precarious position because wow, that was some little. That's issue. a lot of peas. I'm sorry. <laughs> so. It was. It's particularly dangerous for you because you know who the dragon cultists are now. You know roughly where their crates are in the caravan, but you can't attack them or in any way overtly reveal yourselves because you need to know where it is that they're going. So it is a, a crisis of self-control. Um, Which Leaky does not have. It, it, this is particularly dangerous for everybody. And once the blood starts flowing, the other two don't have a whole lot of control either. So... Um, we had the tall guard die of dysentery, unfortunately. And we also had a murder, or an attempted murder, that Cesaria thwarted by committing counter-murder. And then they self masked defense. the... Is that, is that how we're going to play this in court? <laughs> self-defense. Um, I feel like that was... Like, I get your warp token now. <laughs> um, and then you guys basically dumped the body in the river. And they couldn't prove anything, so we just moved on. You also ran into the Golden Stag, which gave Cesaria a magical bow and said that one of you will be hurt, one of you will be killed, and it's basically going to be a bad time. But keep going, because you're doing a good thing. So that give, that leads us to day 31, and you guys arrive in Daggerford in light rains in the morning. Finally. Sky bath. Sky bath, indeed. And yes, at long last, it took 31 days of hard road travel, but you've arrived in Daggerford, which is a small town. It's not its not like a small town, but it's kind of like Greenest. It's a decent-sized town. And it is one of the last stops before the city of Waterdeep, which lies to the north of you. Since you guys have been incredibly helpful and, you know, gone out of your way to kill everything that threatened the, the caravan or even looked at it askance, the proprietor of the caravan offers to put you up for the night at the Rusty Buckler Inn. Um, and this is actually the very first time since you left Baldur's Gate that the caravan has broken up and not been all as one together, which means that the wagons are being kept elsewhere from where you guys are staying. People are kind of staying in different inns. Um, so you can investigate the wagons now if you want. You could give, uh, you could try to go get like weapons sharpened or stuff. There's a smith in town. There's suppliers if you need wagon suppliers or anything like that. Um, how do you want to play this? You got basically you have the day in Daggerford. This is the last full day stop you're gonna make. Uh, I want to go and get the hand axe sharpened that Ot gave me, the dull oh, okay. one. We're gonna we're gonna correct for that. Yes. Okay. Um. So there there is a smithy, and when he when you hand him the hand axe and you explain that you want this thing fixed, he just looks at it, he's like this is this is a horrible axe. It's gonna it's gonna cost you a couple silver to get this thing fixed. Okay. So if you want to give it to him, he'll work on it. Yep. Anything else that you need from him? Nope, that's it. No. He tries to upsell you. Does he? What, yeah. What's he trying to upsell me? Well, specifically, he would like to know if you would like a one to three year care plan for this axe. It'll cost you one gold per year, but then if any time it breaks for any reason, you can come back and probably get it replaced. No. Are you sure? Yes. What about the platinum care plan? What the... Is that a is that a two gold per year and it's still a probably? It's no no they'll definitely replace it. They'll also sharpen it for you. I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah, thanks. Are you sure? Yeah. He makes a little commission on this, so you'd be feeding his little half human babies. No. Okay. How many silver is that? Five. Five. He looks at you like passive aggressively over the cash register. He's like, I don't even know how to operate this thing. I don't have electricity. Bang bang bang. <laughs> Clink ring. 
Anybody else need anything from this guy? So that returns it to normal stats. I'm good. I was just double checking to see if there's anything, but I think actually I'm not bad right now. I definitely don't have enough money to have anything enchanted, so I'm good. Okay. I somehow only have five gold still. It's a sad one. I have a lot of weapons. Yeah. I have tied. Do you have... want to sell any? You could sell them for half the price. Yeah. Okay. She's just going to carry them around. She's we talk about this. Them. We don't use carrying capacity. <laughs> Thankfully. Because I have. I'm still wishy washy on the stag longbow, but I have my heavy crossbow, I have tied, I have a long sword, and I have my silver rapier in the stag longbow. Yeah, you're like a traveling rolling armory. Ooh, well, the silver rapier I only use when I have to because silver is long. Therefore, I have tied. Isn't tied a magical weapon? Tied, tied's a magical weapon. You don't need a yeah, silver I don't, weapon. I don't think you need if you have a magical weapon. I think there's only like one or two cases where a non silvered weapon that's magical wouldn't be effective. I don't know. I'm going to keep it for those one or two cases. I'm sure you'll find someone's neck to stick it in. It's all right. I, I, I have. Or, you know, I can. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They do tend to be off the weapons. I have two. I have, well, I have two hand axes, the boot bolo. Oh, Jesus. And my great axe. So, I mean, I've got quite a few weapons, too. Yeah. Most of mine, two of them get usually get thrown at the beginning of the battle. Though. Yeah, usually on your way in. <laughs> I'm gonna find a, a use for that boot bolo narratively at some point. <laughs> Liz, do you need any any weapons, or you want to sell any to this guy? Um, I do not have enough to sell, so I am good. Okay. Um, what about clothing, supplies, medicines? Um, Are we moving into a new climate where new clothing would make sense? You got your clothes for the north. Okay, then no, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, so we don't need any other supplies. So you could either go chill for the night. You could go check on the on the wagons. You could go probably look. should go investigate the wagons now that no one's around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, it takes about four hours to search the town for where the specific ones you are looking for because you don't really care about your own wagons. You're looking for the dragon cultist wagons, correct? Yes. Okay, so then in that case, um, it's going to take about four hours to find them. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I need you to roll um, investigation checks. Six. <laughs> Not one? Yes. So, critical fail, but seven. Okay. Her Corey's is high enough that she's able to go back and figure out where it is they put the dragon cultist caravan or wagon. Um, she comes back and finds you guys and leads you to this warehouse on the northeastern side of town. But when you come back, you realize that the wagons aren't alone. There's actually um, there's actually a patrol, and you see a guy in red robes and a wool hat that covers everything except his face, like one of those weird face socks, arguing with the guards trying to uh, trying to hire his way onto their wagon team. Are they distracted enough we could sneak by him? They're standing in front of the wagon. Oh. Yeah, so they're they're like they were patrolling it. He's trying to like he's arguing with them over something. It sounds like he's trying to buy his way onto the wagon team. Okay, uh, I'm gonna roll a sneak check and get as close as I can, mm -hmm. and to be able to hear the conversation. Okay, seven. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? No. Oh, <laughs> Um. Stealth. I got a 14. Kurt. You got a what? 14. A 14. So as Lindsay like slowly slinks forward and hears that he's arguing with them about he had already prepaid for part of this trip um, and that he was supposed to be able to meet up with them, one of them looks over this guy in the wool cap and he's like, Oi, there's a dwarf over there. What do you want? Are you racist against dwarves too? Oh. He looks at his buddies and he's like, where'd that even come from? Get out of here. Scamper off. Like he just stands there, stares at him. Well, since you're not doing anything overtly hostile, they just ignore you. Pointedly ignore you. You can feel the ignoring <laughs> over this guy's head. They go back to arguing with him. You're being shown. So it sounds, what Corey finds out before Leaky and eventually Cesare, if you stand there long enough, are going to spoil, is that he's, he's arguing that he already paid the owner for permission to, to join the caravan, and these guys are giving him a hard time. 
may I point out that they managed to see the dwarf but missed the mountain that is moving alongside him to the cart. You probably blend in. You're kind of gray. That's true. I do have gray skin. Anything else? The fire red mohawk's a little yeah, hard to miss. It is. The weird plaid that doesn't blend into anything. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, so you know where they are then. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you want to do? You want to forward through the day? Um, before we do, can I have um Corey sit out the night? Or we should I should we should have one person probably stay with the wagon to make sure nobody comes and takes anything off of them. Okay. Well, since Corey's already hiding, it kind of makes sense that yep, she can do that. Say. So that means that Leaky and Cesario are going to go back to the tavern <laughs> where you guys are being held up. Or not held up, but put up, which is called the Rusty Buckler Inn. And uh, um, it's here that the proprietor that you had been hired by is talking to a small gnome in a black outfit and a black hat. And he's bu she's buying her way onto the caravan. Um she stares a little while at Jen while this guy jabbers at her about what a great economic opportunity it is to join as a teamster, especially for a gnome that might be able to fix things, because he's just presuming that all gnomes how to know how to invent things. You know, they can all just do it. Because they're gnomes. Racism. <laughs> You're just muttering that into your ale. <laughs> but, uh, so she's staring at Jen in particular. Or she's staring at Cesaria in particular. And doesn't say a whole lot. Leaky elbow, Cesaria in the ribs. You should probably go talk to her. She's been staring you down. Yeah. I walk up to the gnome. You like in the middle of the discussion, or you waiting for it to calm down? The fire crackles. I'm just gonna stare her down and wait for her to stop talking. Okay. So it it takes a long time for the merchant to finally realize that like she's not responding positively, but eventually he leaves her alone and she's. Seated over by the fire. So if you're approaching her, um, she knows you're coming and like turns to face you and she goes, what do you want? Why are you staring me down? Not now, she says. If not now, when? Are you, are you yelling that across the camera? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, is it a dwarf with you? or like yeah, what, what is, what is? he's pretty much my untamed pet. Pardon him. Just pet, nothing else? Yeah, pretty much. Now who does he work for? Eh, he's kind of my brute force. So it works for you? I don't work for anybody. Are you just shouting this across <laughs> the <Yes! room? laughs> You're not even over here, you belligerent idiot. So she's, I'm drunk, all right? <laughs> that didn't take very long. That'll no. be one gold. It never does. Hi. Um, she says that not now, but she she will want to talk to you later on. Um, she knows. She says she knows that why you're on the road, but... Uh, that now is not a good time. You need to wait until after they leave Daggerfoot. So you'll come find me? I'll come find you when it's time. Do you have a name? She says her name is Jamina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was waiting for a smart remark from Leaky. No smart remark. Just vapid headbanging. Yep. Mm -mm. Is that it? Yeah, I'll walk away. From okay, so she's gonna she turns the fire and ignores you as you walk away. Um, so that's it for you two. However, mm -hmm. at the caravan compound, you notice that the the guards change several times, and there's a mild disruption with one of the other carts. Um, the one that has the gargoyle and the silver chain. The gargoyle starts shrieking. The necklace. The, the, yeah, with the little necklace, oh. the silver necklace. Anybody else remember the gargoyle with the silver necklace? Yeah. The chain on him? Yeah. Yeah, we had, so, we had like a five minute conversation about it. About how it was contained by the little tiny thread. And he was like, it's silver. Oh, yeah. Right. That's right. So okay. that one is also parked in the same compound, which you didn't know until it started screeching and trying to shake the, the cart apart. Okay. So I'm going to go over and investigate. Okay. You're going to roll a perception check? You want an investigation or a perception? It will be perception. Okay. 11. Okay. Um, that's enough for you to see the very small footprints running towards the caravan that you were supposed to be guarding, and you just got distracted and walked away. And now I want you to roll a dexterity saving throw to sneak away. Okay. Because the other guards are, the, the ones that were also patrolling it are coming towards you. Thirteen. Thirteen is high enough for you to, like, just barely scoot away. So they show up and they're like, what is all this noise? And they're like, oh my god, it's a gargoyle! Yeah. But it's still contained on there because it's silver. It's just really loud. So, 
you can go back and try to piece that together with them, or we can move on and forward the day. Um, we can forward the day. All right. So over the next two days, um, you guys set right back out from Daggerford, and you don't see any more of Jamna. She's somewhere in the caravan, but again, there's you know like half a dozen wagons, and you guys are busy with your own patrol duties, so you don't see her. You do notice, however, that on the cultist wagon, the one that you know for sure is cultist, the guy with the wool cap and the red ropes has been hired. But he's not walking, he's not patrolling, he's just sitting up there, so he must have bought his way on as a like a, a manager or something. So the others are deferential to him, and he's definitely like buddy-buddy, chummy-chummy with him now. But he doesn't talk to anybody else except for them. And uh, the days themselves are starting to grow noticeably short. So the trees that you ride by are thinning, their red and brown leaves are starting to form carpets at their bases, and that makes the wagons nicely quieter. Um, coming. Yep, it would appear to be so. The ground starts to level out too, which makes for easier travel. So you guys actually cover a lot of ground in the next two days, during which time the caravanners begin to clump out too, as if separating themselves back into their own groups. Because after Dagger for everyone's in like one tight knot, but over the next two days they spread way out in another line. Um, on the 32nd day, no, I'm sorry, on the 33rd day, um, as you're getting ready for your patrol duties, you're eating oatmeal. It's pretty good oatmeal. It kind of doesn't appear to have too much sawdust in it. Pretty good oatmeal. And Je uh, Jam Jamna pops out of nowhere, and she sticks the blade of her dagger into Leaky's oatmeal. Why me? Well, she pulls the dagger out. And she shows you an oatmeal-smeared object resembling a tiny bead, which she glances over her shoulder towards where the cultists sit farther down the road, eating their own breakfast. And under her breath, she says, it's a sliver of bone. It's, a curled, it's curled into a circle so that you can swallow it in a mouthful of oatmeal without noticing. And once eaten, it slowly uncurls inside you, exposing needle points that can pierce your guts and kill you slowly. I suspect they're in all your breakfasts. Then she gets up and walks away, and she adds, let's talk this evening. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Corey is not amused. <laughs> okay. I, I dump my oatmeal. Fair enough. Splash. Or splat, really. In, in Corey's <laughs> case, since Corey is a trained warrior, picks out the piece and then continues to... <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting ready to say Linky finishes his oatmeal. Okay, so you need to make a, uh, an intelligence check to see if you can find the, the other piece. All right. If, you know, or any others that may be in there, I suppose. So it's a DC 15 intelligence investigation check. <laughs> oh. <laughs> might, this might not have been a good course of action. Kyle, you get a plus four to your saving throw if you're going to do it, though. You're within 10 feet. I got a nine. A nine. Seven, seven. So it's already the simplest way. Intelligence saving throw? Yep. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. No, wait. Twelve. Twelve. Um, so you both find a small handful of things that could be oat husks, sawdust, or insect eggs. But they could also be the bone slivers. So, I don't know if you want to continue eating. I'm not going to eat it. Okay, <laughs> splash it on the ground. Gross. Okay. So that evening, after most of the travelers had bedded down, Jamna comes back to you. And she begins by introducing herself to... Corey and to Leaky, since she already introduced herself to Cesaria directly. And even though she had a brief <laughs> one way conversation with Leaky, she says, We don't work for the same people, but we're all on the same side, and we all share a belief that the cult of the dragon must be stopped. And I need to know what they're carrying in those wagons and when they're taking it. I already tried once, but I couldn't get close enough before the cultists went back. So, will you help me find out? We can do it tonight. Sure. Um, unless you have I anything will. else you want to share with her, I suppose. Well, we we did find two cultist crates on our caravan, but they were full of plates. That was it? Just plates? Just ceramic plates. Nothing. No we're, treasure, there was no stolen a, goods. There was um, uh, an emerald or a necklace. There was some kind of necklace, too. Yeah, an emerald it. necklace. And Is it the... possible they're switching crates? Could be. Have you guys left a picket on the wagon the entire time to watch them? No. She just sighs really heavily. She's <laughs> like, you're supposed to be able to do surveillance. That's what they told me anyway. Uh, who told you? We're not going to get into it. My employers. They told me that they had top 
surveillers on the case. She like looks at Leaky, and she yeah. looks at Cesare, and she's like, "Come on, I know who you work for. You know who I have to work with." <laughs> <laughs> You're only as good as your weakest link, and mentally weak. Hi. Hi. She is not impressed by this. Um, <laughs> She says, "What about have you have you overheard anything? They they talked about one of them going missing. Do you know anything about that?" I know that one died of dysentery while we were on the road. The cultist did. The cultist died of dysentery. Oh uh, no, you shanked that one. Oh, the yeah. one they're talking about, you murdered. She leans towards Lincoln. and she's like, "Tell me more." <laughs> he attacked me, and I shanked him in the thigh, and he bled out because he was trying to kill me. And what did you do with the body? We put it in the river. Dumped it in the river. Okay, well, that makes the sense. The wildlife need to eat, too. That's true. I had heard that you had other ways of disposing corpses. I'm glad it didn't go that way this time. He I'm trying hungry. to cut back on that. <laughs> Leaky wasn't hungry this time. Um, okay, so do you know, she says, do you know anything about the guy in the wool hat? In the red robes? The, new, the other new hire? So we know, um, I held surveillance over the cart for the night mm -hmm. and we found that he was fighting with another guard saying that he had already bought his way onto mm -hmm. the caravan and the other guard was not believing him but as it seems they came to some kind of agreement because now he is a part of the caravan okay he is she says a red wizard of Thay. do you do you know anything about that we do not i do not outside of game gen do you know anything about that from previous stuff no okay um, so she says that the Red Wizard of Thay is, you can't trust them. They come from Thay, obviously. Um, but they have spread out basically to gather knowledge, and they cannot be trusted because they have no ball compass. So, so he's friends? Gonna, so <laughs> he's going to die. Magic. Oh. So he's a Red Wizard of Thay. You, you can't trust them, and she points out that they're chumming it up. So that is super suspicious. Um, and. She's very grateful, though. So you, you've already told her everything she needs to know, so you're not going to need to break into the wagons. She knows that there's plates in there, but it seems like they're switching the cargo, so if she were to break in, it would be kind of a waste of time because they could have switched it at any time. Um, she wasn't able to break in when she tried to sneak into the compound the night that you were at Daggerford. So who knows if she'd even have found anything inside the crates. Do you know anything about that gargoyle that keeps screeching? The one in the silver chain? Yeah. Well, no. It's just being transported. Do you know where it's going to? No. It just keeps screeching. Well, it's a gargoyle. It's a monster. It's not really domesticated. Well, they should train it then. Were you the one that caused it to scream that night at the compound? Yes. <laughs> it did, they, they, they did not get as distracted by that as I thought. She wants to go back to the idea. She's like, do you think you'd actually domesticate a gargoyle? Try. Oh. You've been failing at domesticating me. Yeah, but she can put a silver chain on it. I don't know. You are cutting back on your cannibalism. That's only because of tear. Uh -huh. And oh that's my. because you like being beat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get into that. <laughs> what I do in my free time is none of your business. Mm -hmm. Just well. because your partner, your gay partner died, because you couldn't look after him. Don't you put that on me. Mm. Don't you put that on me. Um, I think there's more important things that we need to deal with, guys. <laughs> She's just collecting information passing you. <laughs> Shade has been thrown, Lee. She's got that look of somebody who, like, has the impression that she's completely aware of what's going on. So, anyway, proceed. Um, so you guys don't actually have to break into the wagons, which is great because it saves you time and also frustration. Um, on day 30... Who lost my hammer? I don't know what you're talking about. She says, what hammer? The pride of my clan. That doesn't tell me anything. It was a dwarven thrower. Big, squarey. Yeah. Leather handle. Yeah? Yeah, that's passed through Waterdeep. They were banding it around Resimir. So you've seen it? I haven't seen it, but I heard rumors before I left, before I left Waterdeep. Yeah, that passed through. He was waving it all over the place. North of Waterdeep. 
that's where I think where they're going. We just need to get to the other end of it. All right. So if you have nothing else to accidentally leak to j to jam them, then uh, <laughs> the the next two days are well, kind my of name boring. Is leaky. <laughs> <laughs> leaky sprung a leak. No. Um, Your puns are bad, and you should feel bad. You made the pun. Don't care. <laughs> So sh the next two days are kind of boring. Um, there's not a whole lot going on, except that you pass village after village after village because everything is much closer together now. Um, the road itself becomes wider. It's better traveled. There's more people on the roads. And also you can begin to see the smog and the, the smoke stain that is water deep laying far to the north of you. But you're no more than like two or three days travel at this point. So... On day 36, you wake up to a killing. One of the cultists who was acting as a wagon guard was murdered overnight. He was stabbed in the back with a sword. And everybody's gathered around in a big circle. I want to go do an investigation check. Fair enough. They let you through because they trust you at this point. 21. Good lord. Okay, so that is definitely a sword stabbing. The wound is way too big to be with a dagger. Um, and it looks like he like he 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 was left where he fell. Um, and as you're like leaning down and you're you're examining the nature of the wound and the angle that it was fall that he fell at, two of the other cultists pop forward and they immediately accuse you, Cesaria, of being the one who murdered him because they're like, look, she's got like six swords on her. How do we know which one it did? It's got to be her. She's the killer. Mine are all clean. Check them. You could have wiped it at any time. Meh. Didn't you say the sword was still sticking out of their back? No, it's a sword wound. Oh. Sword wound. Too big for a dagger. So they accuse Cesaria, and they're like, look it, she's a killer. She killed the other guy, too, back on the road a couple weeks ago. We know it was her. That was self-defense. Are you admitting to killing our friend? <laughs> <laughs> the proprietor's, like, stroking his beard. He's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Wasn't he the one that also helped decide the body? No, though? that was the shift manager. Oh, shift manager. But look, she just admitted to killing another one. Mm -hmm. I think we should arrest her. And take her to Waterdeep for justice. Um, she. I'm gonna try to do a charisma check and make it and say that she was with me last night. Okay. She was at camp all night and did not leave. Okay. It was a persuasion check, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 22. They're like, but but you're her friend. Of course you'd defend her. And I yell out to the crowd. You, you lost some of the crowd support. They lost some of the crowd support with that. Um, so I say, was there anyone else who saw Cesaria last night? I did. You're her friend. Of <laughs> course you'd defend her. <laughs> can we ask Jam Jamin? <laughs> Jamna? Uh, yeah, you can call out for her, I suppose. Um... Actually, who was the guards on duty last night? Do we know? I yell out, who was the guard on duty last night? Um, Jamna pops forward and she goes, I was on duty. I was on the north end of the camp last night. Um, and tell us what you saw. She said, I didn't see anything. As far as I know, when the sun came up, he was already dead. There was nobody moving around last night, especially not this one. She's a clod hop. You can hear her coming from a mile away. She wakes at you unsubtly. <laughs> All those weapons are not the quietest thing to move. I I motion back to the Start cultists point. and say, see, Cesario was nowhere near this this place. Um, one of them leaps forward and tries to swing at her. So be I can't believe you killed my friend! Like, hauls back to punch you. We should probably restrain him. <laughs> you could. Leaky, you want to grapple? Or someone's attempting to get surprised on your family. Leaky, you want to grapple and restrain? Because we don't want to kill someone in front of all these people. <laughs> He's going to do a strength check to pin him. Fair enough. <laughs> Calm down, dear child. Jeez, that's a six. Uh, you leap on him and he throws you aside. All right, I'll try. It's the dice. Uh, right. I got a 23. <laughs> <laughs> like I have so previously tumbles, said. So tumbles by her and Corey just decks him. Wow. <laughs> okay. I guess having the extra four feet of leverage must help. <laughs> yeah, that's what we'll go with. 
Oh no, Leaky got thrown. Okay, so uh, they they back off, but they look at you, all three of you, with like burning hatred. Leaky for intervening when they thought he'd keep his distance. Corey for knocking out their buddy, and Cesario for definitely totally being a murderer of at least one, maybe two of them. <laughs> and Jamna for lying, because they, they know that she's not telling the truth. Um, so... After this, you guys are sent out on patrol, but they deliberately break you up because now they've kind of like lost some of the trust they had in you. And on day 38, it snows a little bit. It's a very light snow, but uh, it makes the horses a little bit testy. It makes all the people kind of huddle up and, and shut up. And the dragon cult to spend the entire time staring you down in particular. Who? You. Me? You. Yeah, you. Because you're an ankle biter. <laughs> um, Cesare is off on patrol, but they know that, you, that you're sticking around the caravan. Um, but it doesn't come to anything. They're, they seem to be afraid to do anything. Um, and then on day 39, you, arri you arrive in Waterdeep at the very outskirts of it. You pass through the first gate. So this is not going to be like Baldur's Gate because, first of all, the caravans don't get totally broken up because the streets are much broader. They actually allow wagons on the inside. And so what ends up happening is as you're riding along in your horses, the proprietor starts passing out coin to everybody because his caravan gets pulled over on the side almost to meet his wagon. The cultist wagon, however, continues north. It keeps going right on through the city. So how do you want to play this? You can stop to get paid, or you can continue on. You should probably continue on. I should probably, yeah. Even though I only have five gold to my name. And it is probably we, better we continue on. Between we, the two of us, we, we have, have enough, enough to cover gold. whatever you need. All right. So with that, then, we'll continue through. Okay. So the prior is like, wait, wait. Don't you want your gold? Keep and it. Also a letter of recommendation. Keep it. Give it to the poor. Thanks for your service. You're welcome. So um, you, you leave them. You leave the beer cart behind. And you follow oh. them. <laughs> <laughs> You follow them all the way to the north side of the city, and there's another gate in the, in the north. Um, they pass through that, but they actually stop at a warehouse outside that gate, and then they kind of disperse and go on their own way. They leave their wagon there at the warehouse. How do you guys want to play monitoring the, uh, the, the wagons and also trying to figure out what to do next? Uh, one of us should have eyes on the wagon at all times. Okay, that makes sense. Who's going to do that? Uh, probably not me, because I'm squishy, and they hate me. Um, I'll, True. I'll yeah, be the they person. don't like you. I did punch him in the face, but I'll be the person. Okay, so you're just basically going to hang out in the north gate? Yep. Okay, so that, then in that case, what are Cesare and Leaky going to do? Investigate? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So why don't you guys roll investigation checks? Um, I'm going to try to shorthand water, water deep a little bit, although we should come back to water deep at some point, maybe visit the, uh, the tavern, the Yawning Portal. Once we're done with yeah. this part, definitely. That's an idea for you. So you're gathering in, in, you're gathering intelligence by investigating, right? Yep. Okay. Seventeen. Nice. Okay. So Cesare, one of the first things that you hear is that uh, the the road crews that are building a road um, to the city of Neverwinter are hiring. They're hiring both guards and also laborers because they're trying to open the road north of Waterdeep to Neverwinter. And the issue is that it, it goes to a dangerous area called the Mere, M-E-R-E, -E, of dead men. And so they need adventurers and strong people who can both defend the caravans of laborers going up there and the supplies and also do the hard work. And you can acquire about being hired at any of the warehouses north of the city where all those supplies are being stored. Okay. Okay. Wakey, rolling time. Rolling time. We're going to change die. Fair enough. Um, I am specifically looking for information on the hammer. Okay. All righty. That is a 14. Okay. It's a 14. It's high enough to know that you, you hear rumors of Resimir, um, a half dragon, being sighted in the area at least a 10 day ago. And among those, some of them claim that he had some sort of hammer that he thought was the best. Okay. Without a higher roll, I can't give you more specifics. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll another one to see if I can figure out where he's gone. All right. 19. Wow. Okay. 
So um, if the rumors that you hear are true, the half-dragon was traveling with a very strong escort of mounted guards headed north. It can't be confirmed 100% true, but everybody seems to say that he left. he's already left the city about 10 days ago and that he went north. Okay. How about you, Cesaria? More info? More intelligence? You could find out about the Mirror of Dead Men. You could find out yeah. about... This road building project. Um, uh, 16 for the road building project. Okay, so the Lord of Neverwinter, whose name, name is Lord Never Ember, is trying to rebuild his city after the catastrophe that happened centuries ago, uh, or one century ago, when Mount Hotenau exploded. And now, in order to get trade going, he's trying to get the road open. The issue is that it crosses through this marsh, and the marsh is dangerous. It's got trolls and uh, some a couple little bands of orcs. It's got lizard folk and bullywugs, who everybody is mutually disgusted by, um, that infest it because it's been basically unpatrolled for a hundred years now. So it's not an easy thing. It's going to take them several years to get it completely open. But there are several roadhouses along this this two hundred mile stretch where Supplies are being delivered and, and built off to try and expand and, and fortify the road. Sounds like fun. Yay. Do you know anything about bull lungs? Not fun. Yeah. You can roll a nature check. I can give you some info if you want. The name sounds very familiar and I don't like 16 it. 16 for a nature check. Oh, are you, are you trying to get that off Cesaria? She came back and was like, there's orcs and trolls and bully lungs. Yeah. Like, what's, what, a bully what's, what, what's a bully lung? What's a bully lung? Okay, let me find. I out. briefly remember them, and I don't like them. I don't know a whole lot about them, so this is kind of interesting. Oh my god, they're beautiful. But one of them was wearing a fun-looking hat later on in the book. Um, so, <laughs> bullywugs are frog people. Mm -hmm. uh, they have gray, green, or mottled yellow skin that shifts, um, and they wear crude armor. They're simpletons. They're hateful little simpletons. <laughs> um. Is that it? That's all you got for us? You rolled 16, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, they, they also like to introduce themselves with grand with grand sounding titles, usually that they take and borrow from the local areas. So you may have the Lord Neverwinter of Bullywuggery, for example. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're always hungry. They are thoroughly evil. They like to ambush people, especially on roads in marshes where they think that they can get numbers on, on them. Um, but they're real dumb. So sometimes you can trick them into helping you. Hmm. Mm hmm All right. Real dumb. Also, they are quite fond of hats. So before we Is there a hat shop? <laughs> <laughs> I am sure in the city of Neverwinter there is a haberdashery. I got to use that word in a sentence today. Never Neverwinter? We're not in Neverwinter. Are we though? You don't you can't read maps. We're in water. It's gotta start with a new water water. Deep. Hold on, roll an intelligence check. We're in water deep. You've learned the letter M. You can now read Ma. Woo! <laughs> okay, yes, you're right. You're in water deep. Um, you should probably add that to your inventory. The letter M. <laughs> I'm going to add it to the notes. the notes. Today, kids. You can read two, three words now. Uh, am, and Ma. Should have learned Foos Road Da. Oh, wait. That's Outside this, I can't that believe that there's not a Skyrim D&D style game. Like, wouldn't that be an obvious official license thing to make? And then you could have people screeching and dragging at each other over the table. Right? Okay. Um, so we need to buy hats. Yep. Use hats to bribe. This is going to go two ways. Either we're not going to run into bullywogs and you're just going to have this mountain of hats <laughs> for the rest of time. Or you're going to run into bullywugs. I'm going to forget what it is that I just said. And you're going to be like, I offer him a hat and throw me completely off. <laughs> <laughs> I offer him a hat. He croaks in joy at you. Um, okay, so you want to go buy some hats. Yes. Yep. Okay, what kind of hats do you want to buy? we got chef hats. we got baseball caps. No one knows what baseball is, but like one time this dude An array through, of hats. You're going to buy an array of hats. I'm I, also going to buy an the array. episode title. An, an array, array of hats. hats. Yes. Um, I'm also going to buy an array of hats. Okay. How much does that cost? I would say, do you want cheaply made hats or exquisitely made hats? Exquisitely made hats. Two gold. All right. Okay. And I'll the buy beautiful soft hats. 
You have the most beautiful hats Corey. in Waterdeep for bully ones. Just ask him. I also buy a set for Corey. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, we'll split that one. No, I'll buy it for Corey. Okay. Well, fine. Trying to be nice mm. and help. They also have a hat, Kyle. They have a hat leaky that is an iron cap with two big deer antlers. You you had to. Does it have room for the mohawk? It does. Yeah. So the it's, mohawk it's can cut. Co- this is pre-made for dwarfs. The nice thing is you could store all your hats on your hat. But then the bully walls would steal them. I will let them. I want the hat rack hat. hat. For you <laughs> one hat for you. You want the hat, hat rack hat? The hat rack hat. That one is five gold pieces. Okay. I have to draw that now. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and that is being added to my inventory. Hat rack hat. By the way, we were in Target the other day mm-hmm. and um, almost bought you a floppy hat. <laughs> I can get one eventually. They're not that expensive. Mm-hmm. With a flower on it. Unless it has a floppy hat, too. I think it was delivered by a, by a tumbling dwarf, too. Yeah. I believe so, yeah. Well, adding the flower would be really easy. Yeah. I don't think we specified a color, either. I don't think we did. Alright. Anyway. <laughs> Speaking of hats. Um, anything else you guys want to do in Waterdeep? I don't know. No, I just, that's it. I just add an, an array of Bullywog hats to my inventory. Oh, yeah, I gotta do that, too. Fair enough. Okay. Ray. Um. Do you know how to spell array? He knows the first letter. <laughs> and... Hey, you can teach him two for one here, because it's got two repeating letters. Oh, boy. Me as a player knows how to spell everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You use Google for everything. No, I don't. You're a millennial. Accept your life. Okay. I think also the hat rack hat with all the bullywog hats should also be the cover art for this one. I definitely, yeah. <laughs> I think so. All right. Anything else? I'm still on the wall. <laughs> yeah, you're still. Well, you're. Yeah, you're. So we you're, should probably go right. back and tell Corey. I, I go up to Corey and I give her her array of fully walk hats and explain mm-hmm. to her why. What's this? These are for These in won't case fit my head. No, they're in case we run into bullywogs. They're little frog people that are very angry, but we can pretty much bribe them with hats to do What's our bidding. What's wrong with this place? <laughs> a Many lot, things. A lot. Where I came from, in the home country, we never had to deal with oh, humanoid-shaped God. frogs that needed hats for bribery. They said talking the, rocks and stuff. The talking rocks were completely natural and only helped those and unless you stepped on them. stay away from Mark. That slab of granite. Every time I walk by him, a cat calls me. He runs by and calls me a piece of schist <laughs> every oh, time. My God. <laughs> Your puns are bad. And you should feel bad. Geology humor is the worst. It really is the rock bottom. Oh, get out! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you said her all over that spike me. I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> Okay, well, in any case, you guys know that they're hiring. You have you are well equipped now to deal with bowling wogs. I don't know how they'd help with trolls, but I guess we'll find out maybe. <coughs> we'll take a bully. Never mind. Don't, don't know. No, we we're not going there. We we're not going there, Cesaria. Bad elf, bad. We shouldn't take any of this advice for granted. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> this is a two-player game now. <laughs> I was going to say, since we, we're not allowed to throw the dwarf, if we bribe... Do we have stuff for a giant slingshot? I mean, it's a big city. I guess you could probably find a giant elastic band. We could. Bribe we don't need a giant slingshot. Logs. No. And no. They're good no. jumpers. They're no good jumpers. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> she rolled a nature check. <laughs> I rolled the nature check. That's true. Yeah. We can slingshot them with the trolls' faces. I don't think they'll be amenable to that. It doesn't matter when they have a little dagger on their forehead. None of our hats have That's daggers. A sharp looking hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your puns are bad too. Yeah, oh, I'm aware. I'm aware of how bad I stink. Okay. So you guys probably should get hired to. Do you want to guard or labor? Well, we guard. have to still watch the. Uh, we still have to watch the cart though. That's true. So we'll you know where guard. they're going. All that stuff is going north. So, so, so they're going to Neverwinter. They're they're going north. North, north um, of Waterdeep. 
nothing says we can't, you know, tag along, and then when the cart leaves, we just go leave. away. Yeah. Okay. Nothing's stopping us from doing that. Nothing's set in stone. <laughs> <laughs> An array of hats and bad puns. <laughs> Welcome to a dagger party. <laughs> Ray of Pass and Bag Flints. <sighs> uh, the episode title does keep getting better. <laughs> I know, but it still it hurts me. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, okay, you guys want to try to get hired? Yeah. You're hired. Yay! They take one look at you and they're like, you are obviously well equipped for this. Um, however, <laughs> they look at all of Cesaria's <laughs> weapons. Yeah. <laughs> and you with your hat of hats. Yes. <laughs> You did dress for the for the job, right? I did. Like, look, I'm prepared for the mirror of dead men. Um, and any bull, any bully wug you might run into. So they hire you, uh, like sight unseen. However, you do notice that at that wagon, the other there are some cultists from before that have also been hired as laborers, and they're basically waiting to help manage this wagon, teamster this wagon north, and they just glare at Cesaria with just hate in their eyes. I glare back at them. They're not. They're not at all worried about. It. They're like, one of us couldn't take her. Maybe three of us can. I step in front of Cesaria and Claire. They glare over your head. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna leave that there. Can Next they? Time you can guys they see ignored. Cesaria through the hat of hats? Yes. Uh, probably like like look, looking through a forest. <laughs> we're gonna leave it there um, because next time we want to actually go north, and you guys are gonna be moving into a little spy story actually. Ooh. So we have at least one stealthy character. The other one can be stealthy when the rules are, you know, above a five. So most of the time, yeah. <laughs> so the die were not in my favor today. We're all done with the road stuff. We're, I'm going to shorthand all the way through it. In fact, it says right here, it's like don't waste any time on the road. So we're going to actually start next time in the location where you will be playing. Okay. Um. And we've got a couple different things. You've met Jamna, Gleam Silver, the gnome, who knows roughly what your job is and was trying to help you. You know that the uh, Dragon Cult is taking stuff north, but obviously not all the way to Neverwinter because th these caravans are not going to Neverwinter. They're supplying the roadhouses. You know that there's Bullywugs and that Bullywugs like hats. And uh, you also know that Resimir was in the vicinity with Leaky's hammer at some point in the last 10 day. So there's lots of stuff building to a head here. Getting close. Yep. It's going to be a glorious day when I get my hammer back. Oh, it will be. Um, so that'll, if you like, that'll be the day that we just have to ignore whatever noises come out of Leaky's tent. <laughs> <laughs> After I get my hammer back, can I turn my great axe into a grown weapon? Like chop the handle off and just... Maybe? I'd have to, I think, I'd have to research as, that. It probably wouldn't be quite as effective. So, um, if you like what you're listening to, if you like the way that it's developing, then leave us a review on iTunes, please, or share it on social media, whatever form that takes for you. If you don't like it, I don't know what you're doing 60 episodes into it, but tough luck. I'm Travis the DM. I'm Kyle. I play Leaky, Exile of the Golden Tur Clan, and Wielder of the Boot Bolo that we still have yet to use. I'm going to find a way. To, I thought I used it. No, because you're because it was right after Tide broke, or Drown broke. Yeah, you threw it to her. You were very proud of yourself, and then she was like, what do I do with this? Yeah, and then never used it. I'm Jen, and I play Cesario. I'm Lindsay, and I play Cory, Worm Crusher, and Purveyor of Puns. <laughs> business card there okay <laughs> we will see you in two weeks with episode 17 bye bye the cannon fodder diecast is produced and edited by travis knight intro and outro music is composed by kevin mcleod and used within the creative common rights the diecast is intended for entertainment purposes only Follow us on Twitter at Cannon Fodder Pod for more show news, game updates, and character antics. If you enjoyed the show, please go leave us a review. Thank you for listening, and see you next time.
hey, it's Travis here. If you're still listening and you like my DMing, you like my fiction, well, I've got pretty cool news. Apahelion Webzine published my fantasy short story called The Plague Wind this month, March 2018. So if you like my fiction, you can go over there. You can read the short story for free. It's about a monster hunter named Brior hunting a whole new, very darkly fantastic monster that you've never seen before. So go check that out over at Apahelion Webzine. And we will see you in two weeks.